email management, calendar management, you know, you can do them, but it's not sustainable that you keep doing them just so you can focus on the right things in your business. Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now my goal is that at the end of this video is to walk you through what's the different things that you need to do before you onboard your virtual assistant. Now if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Leanne Laila Kaba. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run an outsourcing company here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to visit from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, when it comes to onboarding a virtual assistant, you guys probably have already gone through the whole hiring process. And if you still have no idea what it is, I do have a ton of videos that you guys can check out on how to hire a virtual assistant. But at this point, they've already gone through probably your interviews. They probably already get, went through your test. You've gotten to know them a little bit and you say, yeah, let's, let's try this out. So here are a few things to keep in mind as you start thinking of like, okay, this is the person for me. First one is at this point, you should have the list of things that you want to outsource. You have a list of things that you want to make sure that you give to your assistant as tasks and there's a ton of videos on my channel that you guys can check out on how to figure out what tasks to give your virtual assistant but it's going to ideally be tasks that you are not good at but needs to get done in your business so probably for example creating graphics or tasks that are just not sustainable for you to keep doing the repeatable tasks that still needs to get done so for example your social media for example or email management calendar management you know you can do them but it's not sustainable that you you keep doing them just so you can focus on the right things in your business so start creating those lists or at the, ideally at this point you already have them but one thing I do encourage is as you're going through the whole hiring process is you're probably observing everything else that you're doing in your business that you shouldn't be doing that someone else should take over so have that list clearly for you maybe put it in a Google Doc or into a notion page or even Asana right away as a task tracker to be able to see how your assistant will fail when it comes to doing those tasks next is once you have that list of tasks is make sure that you have the standard operating procedures written out for it so if you don't have no idea what a standard operating procedure is I do have a whole video on how to create one but basically it's a way for other people to know how you do a certain task it's so easiest way to keep creating results the same results in your business so it could be a standard operating procedure on how to create a social media post you know that matches your branding matches the message for your business it could be a standard operating procedure on how to treat your customers or how to reply to certain emails you know having templates that you have in hand it is really important that you have these so that it's easier for your assistant to just get on and running the other amazing thing that you can have your assistant to do is to create those documentations with you but it's better to have some already in hand so they can see how you prefer to have it made and then they can follow the same next thing you need to do is to make sure that you calculate your budget that's why knowing which tasks that your assistant can do for you is super essential because then you can have them work on tasks that help bring in more money than the of course that's costing you to pay them so always the goal when you're hiring someone is making sure that they're working on the tasks that give you the ROI so of course the business keeps running so calculating the budget of what makes sense for you to keep paying them and also putting on a little bit of a cutoff like at a certain point it's just not working out you know when to call it quits if they're not helping you make that ROI right away it's a little bit harsh but it's the reality of it is because you can't keep paying for someone if they're not helping you grow your business that's why it's essential for you to run your finances before you even start onboarding someone next is to finalize whether you will just need this one virtual assistant you've hired or if you need a whole team the reason why you want to have that distinction is you want to start later on if you really need a team then you might want to make sure that you're training your virtual assistant on the tasks that they can really specialize in and focus on and maybe they can work on some of the tasks that a team can do but then they're also helping you refine what that task looks like helping you create the center operating procedures for them so once you actually start hiring a team then they can easily take over those tasks on the flip side if you really just need one virtual assistant then you can start investing into them more and having them take over some of the parts of the business that you don't want to focus on. Next is you want to start creating your different policies or basically just rules that you have for your business. So a policy could be how do you calculate their pay? For example, is it early, is it salary? This is just an additional documentation on things that both of you have agreed on or informing them. So for example, for us to XU, my virtual assistant company, we have different policies on their pay, on their HMO, for example, on how we calculate their holiday pay, on how we 
calculate their raises. So there's different ways that we've put out documentation so the people see them as a guideline on how to do certain things. So having that in place will help the onboarding process be smoother rather than you having to repeat yourself or go back and forth. There's a documentation where they can find the different guidelines that you have in your company. Next is setting up the right processes for you and your virtual assistant. Now, what I mean by processes is it could be how you guys manage the tasks and the projects. It could be setting up the process of how you guys communicate back and forth. It could be setting the process of how you're going to monitor their hours or the work that they do. So setting up the different systems basically already in your business on how this relationship essentially is going to work out. It's going to be helpful for you as you start setting them up. This will help it be clearer for both of you. Also the boundaries that you guys both need as you are working so for example you know your boundaries are you know after five o'clock you shouldn't be bothered anymore or it's only after five o'clock that you can be bothered and then for them you know setting their hours so having a clear enough systems in place again the important ones that I really like pointing out is a communication system like how often you guys want to talk or how often you guys want to sync the task management or the project management system of how to make sure things are flowing along and things don't fall through the cracks a delegation system where it's going to be easy for you to give them certain tasks throughout the day even if you guys aren't working on the same hours and a tool system you know how do you guys process you know onboarding new tools into your business and also how to communicate back and forth when you guys are testing out something new next is once you have all of that set up is start scheduling the onboarding time once you have all of that kind of checked off when do you actually want to onboard them usually try to slot about 30 minutes to an hour to actually fully onboard them to your systems to your emails for example or the way that you're going to track their time or just how to track their tasks as well so look at those when you're scheduling out the onboarding time and day and then next is one thing to, I really recommend to a lot of our own clients and a lot of the people that I help with in 2XU is have a trial period. So what I mean by trial period is set a time where you look at and actually assess if this relationship is working out, if this work relationship is actually something that's beneficial for you both. I usually recommend two to four weeks for this, but inside of 2XU, we actually have a 90-day process where we go through it rigorously, where we actually can see if someone is a match for our client or not. So it's really up to you what works. What I usually recommend if you're more of a solopreneur and you're really just starting out two to four weeks is perfect but if you have a little bit more budget and a little bit more time then 90 days is perfect because you and your assistant be in different environments and different situations and see if you guys are a good match and finally and a lot of people do skip this is make sure that you draft and send out the contract so when it comes to creating the contract for your virtual assistant it can be as really easily as just covering what services they're going to give you putting in the length of the contract you know it can be definitely but you have the start date of when they're going to start working with you you could also start outlining some of the policies that you have that they have to follow you could have just a very simple you know non-disclosure agreement so they don't share any of your information or a non-competitor agreement where they don't work for another client that's going to be in the same industry so they're not doing the same kind of work that you're training them on so it could be a really simple just contract that you write up that just has the same kind of the whole process that I just walked you through you know has the tasks that they're going to do you know has the policies that they're going to follow what they can expect from working with you so this these are just going to be an outline of what are things that they can expect and what you can expect from them and then you're off you have the virtual assistant who is onboarded in your systems onboarded in your tools onboarded into part of your company and it's gonna be a wild fun ride now if you guys like this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below what other ways have you onboarded your virtual assistants so you, so you can share with other people who have no idea how now if you guys haven't yet make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to business from home which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here now if you guys have an awesome day remember that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video bye